clear me? Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, we got you. Great. I'm only in the middle of uh, St. Regis, Montana, trying to look out fast. So, not a big deal. Great timing. <laughs> What's up, my people? Hi, Bill. How's everyone doing? Bill, thanks for scheduling this. Surely. Oh, hi, Craig. Hey, Bill. Thanks for hosting. Yeah, absolutely. Who has that thing of helping? Is this the crew? Your house look like. The crew is mostly on. Little and it's white. I can't read and talk. I don't know why I'm staring at the screen. Um, Quick reminder, if you're not... Uh, if you're not asking a question to please mute yourself. Good reminder, Bill. Thank you. All right, I will start with a statement and then I'm happy to take questions. Um, one thing that uh, just for, for your information, you can ask me questions about specifics, but I am not at liberty to discuss that at this point in time. That's I've always considered that to be the university that is, is you're going to, it's their job to announce the hire, not the university that you're leaving. And, and Bill and I have always kind of had that approach with the 15 guys that I've lost here over the last five years. So uh, we may as well keep that going with me. Um, so again, I'll, I'll be speaking primarily in kind of broad terms. And so, you know, with that being said, this has been a really, really interesting um, last four or five weeks for me. I, I, I've been really fortunate, I think, to have uh, built a reputation in this business uh, that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in a position to interview for a job like Boise. And there were some other things that came up. This was not the only opportunity that fell in my lap over the last couple of weeks. Um, but this was the one that was the right fit for me at this point in time. And there's a variety of reasons. And as I told our players, I mean, the why is kind of irrelevant, but I know that's what people are going to want to know. And what I can promise you is that the why is not about Montana State. It's not about, you know, Leon not doing everything he could to help make this the best place for me and my family. Waded. Not, I mean, she gave us so much tremendous support. And so this was not about Montana State not trying to do what they had to do to keep me here. That is not what this is about at all. And, and I know you don't know me well. Uh, Bill can probably speak to this. I'm a man of principle and conviction. And, uh, you know, if I'm going to talk to these young men about, hey, you've got to take a jump. You, if you want to be great, if you want to achieve your goals, if you want to live your dream, you're not going to get that by standing on the sidelines. So go put yourself out there and, and be your best self. And whatever happens, you can live with it. And I have, uh, I've, I've tried to live my life with no regrets. And I have absolutely no regrets about my time in Bozeman, Montana. Um, I love this place. My son is a bobcat. My wife is uh, a little upset. <laughs> um, but I think we all know that, you know, when I, it was very difficult for me to do this sitting in my, in, in my office because the emotion just would overcome me. And what I had to do is I had to separate myself from, um, from that building, being around the coaches that I love and respect, um, the, the players that are the only reason that we're here, and um, go for a walk with my wife, clear my head. And when I looked at it from a, um, it was pretty much a slam dunk from the standpoint of what I needed to do professionally to advance my career. And... Uh, to take that chance to, to grab the, that brass ring down the road maybe. And so um, there's a variety of reasons. There's a variety of reasons. I've gone all over it with my pros and cons list and, and, and so forth. 
Um, it was unfortunate the way it went down. That's one of the things that I regret that, uh, you know, this wasn't something that I was aware of early in the week. This started to happen on Wednesday and didn't really get legs until yesterday. And uh, so, um, you know, I know sometimes it can come off as disingenuous. I just think, you know, people have to understand in this day and age, I can't control, I can't control the message. And uh, that was unfortunate because I did have to kind of scramble last night and put together a Zoom meeting at 730. And then, uh, you know, after that, call my staff. And, and, uh, um, and so that was unfortunate. And um, that was definitely regrettable. But I did get an opportunity to address the team today. And I know that Leon's got a really good plan in place. One thing I can tell you is this isn't a house of cards. There's a great foundation here at Montana State. And I know they're going to attract a high quality candidate who is going to be able to, you know, add that little bit that uh, can get this program over the hump and, and, and win in that championship. And so um, uh, my wife gets mad at me because this has kind of been my MO. You know, it's like build, 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 build the house. Don't let the landscaping come in, you know, finish the building, no yard, leave. Um, and that's just an analogy, I think, for this place. And so, and I, and I have, I, I've kind of had a tendency to do that. And I think it's because I'm really driven by the process. I really love the process and that's what kind of fuels my fire and not to say that it's over here, but I think that there's an opportunity for me to continue to grow in this profession. Um, you know, financially, I was at the ceiling of probably what a place like this can do, but that was not the primary reason for this. Um, it was for, you know, me to live my values. And uh, as REO Speedwagon said, once it's time for me to fly. So happy to take any questions. All right, we'll start with Sean Rainey because your hand's up. If you have questions, go ahead, just raise your digital hand and I'll get to you as they're, uh, as they're asked. Sean, go ahead. Coach, I think in the coaching profession or us in the media, we're, it's a very fluid business. We're constantly moving and sometimes moving on to the next step. You're, you want to do it because you don't really like where you're at in the current spot. Obviously, enjoying your time at Montana State, what are, what are the emotions going to be like for that, especially you know leaving a place although you're excited leaving a place that you love so much. Yeah, it's, this is the most, <laughs> as you mentioned, this isn't my first rodeo, but this is the first time I've left a job as a head coach. And that is different. There's levels of responsibility. Um, there's, there's loyalties uh, and it's more, you know, it impacts more people. And that is what is really what's made this the most difficult is the relationships that we've developed here uh, as a family, um, you know, people in the quarterback club, people, you know, our, our, our fan base, Bobcat Nation, our, um, you know, obviously our, our players. And so that has been pretty tough. Um, but again, when I remove the emotion from this decision, it, it becomes pretty clear that for me to achieve some of the things that I still have set on my goals list, um, I've got to take this next step. Last one for me, just there's a lot of people on here. Um, maybe just speak to the dynamic of, like you mentioned, the first time going from a head coach now to a, a different role and, and how much changing roles like that played a, a part of it. Obviously the Boise would have been for a head coaching job. So just, you know, speak to the, maybe just the, the changing roles and going from a head coach down to a lower kind of. Yeah. Position. I, well, first of all, I get to coach football again, so that'll be kind of fun. Um, I'm not just going to be dealing with discipline and fundraising and um, you know, some of those things that you kind of get consumed by uh, you know, essentially you're kind of the culture creator. And there's a lot of things that go into that as a head coach. And I really enjoy that part of it. And I actually think um, I'm pretty good at that part of it. And so what I think I'm going to bring is the ability to have a different perspective. I know I will be the only guy that has been a head coach that will be on the staff. And I think that that brings a lot of value because I do have perspective that is maybe a little bit different, even if it's not the same level. And so, um, you know, I, I think maybe that answers your question. And, and I think that from the standpoint of the, uh, the move and all that kind of stuff. I mean, sometimes you got to take a step backward to take another one forward. Thank you. Let's go next to John Miller. Go ahead, John. Coach, what's one last thing you want to say to Bobcat fans? That's a good question, John. Um, you know, I'd say it's been a hell of a ride. Um, this place has embraced our family and it's been awesome. And no matter where I go, what I do, 
I will always be able to say I never lost to Montana. And we know the Grizz fans are more happy to see you go on all the Twitter threads. <laughs> uh, thanks, Coach. Colter Nuanez, you're up. Go ahead. Hi, Jeff. Congratulations. Um, first of all, can you take us through just what you talk about the culture? What was the culture like when you, I guess, what's the biggest difference do you think you guys have made from a positive fashion in terms of changing the culture at Montana? I think you, I think we've done a really good job of keeping the, the main thing, the main thing. Uh, and I think culture starts with vision. Like that's, that's what drives the culture. You got to kind of know what you want it to look like. And the, the first piece of my vision here at Montana state was to take care of my people and add value to their lives. And, uh, and our people are our support staff, our coaching staff, you know, I mean, Bill, I think can attest to this, you know, I make a point to stop into Bill's office almost every day. And it's not because, you know, his office is spacious and, and clean and neat and I have a nice place to sit. <laughs> Um, it's because I want him to know that I value him and his role here at Montana State. And that's the type of culture that we wanted to build was to make sure that the, the, the support staff, they're there for our student athletes, my staff, and uh, most importantly, our student athletes knew that my number one job was to take care of them and add value to their life. And, uh, and I think that's why we've been able to drive this culture is because we've kept it about our people. And most importantly, we've always made decisions in conjunction with Leon and Waded. Uh, to do what was best for our players here at Montana State. You coached ball in a lot of places. What was the number one thing you learned being a head coach for the first time? <laughs> I don't have all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I just think it's a different role. And, and it was, there was a, there was a, I think there's always going to be kind of that learning curve for somebody that hasn't sat in that chair. One of the challenging things at Montana State, and really in hindsight, uh, one of the cool things about Montana State is that there's this, um, you know, our fan base and the way kind of the way we make things work here with funding, you know, there's no one huge donor that we kind of go to to get us taken care of. I mean, there's, I think over 400 donors contributed to the new facility. And so it's this family. And at first you're like, oh gosh, I got to, you know, do the Eastern Montana swing or I've got to go do this. And then after a while, you really learn to appreciate that. But as far as like how, how you balance that as a head coach, that was my biggest challenge. Because year one, I wanted to be the defensive coordinator, the D-line coach, the special teams coordinator, and the head coach. Well, uh, what I learned in a hurry was put all that stuff aside and just be the head coach and hire good people and let them do their job. And so I'd say that was probably the number one thing. Just because of the way you grew up and where you're from, was that part sort of uh, revitalizing for you? You know, kind of the small town Montana angle, going to places like Plentywood and, and getting to know kind of the salt of the earth people? Yeah, and those people are... I mean, they're just great Bobcats and they're just, um, they're so sincere. It's authentic. You know, there's nothing pretentious about it. We're not going to country clubs. You know, it's just, uh, it, it's real people. And uh, I know both Janet and I really appreciated that. Two more for me. One, what was the hardest part about this decision for you? My family and our players. Um, the hardest conversation that I had was with my son. That was the hardest conversation. My daughter was my biggest cheerleader. She's always up for an adventure. Um, and then talking to our staff and players because that was, I mean, I'm, I'm invested here. I never cheated anybody here, Cole. I never cheated anybody. I gave this place my best and I gave those boys my best. And, uh, you know, when you put your whole self into something, it's going to hurt. And uh, that's okay. You know, that pain is means you're alive and, uh, sometimes you got to go through that. Last one for me, no such thing as unfinished business in college football because the job's never done, right? But, I mean, what do you think of the status of the program that you leave it in and what is the potential for Montana State? I think the sky's the limit. I mean, I think, uh, you know, there's some things that are on the horizon that, you know, bigger picture stuff with the NCAA and potentially even, you know, even the Big Sky Conference with, you know, SUU moving to the WAC. And so there's some of those things, but that doesn't really affect the football team on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, I think that um, coming off of one of the best seasons in over three decades, moving into, uh, I think, what's going to end up being the Taj Mahal of facilities in the, in, in the uh, Big Sky Conference and having the energy of a new coach to be able to push this thing forward a little bit. And, uh, and I'm not saying that I'm, I was out of energy. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I just, you know, you know when, you know when it's time.
And um, it's way better to know when it's time than it is to out, you know, wear out your welcome. And I think this program is poised for greatness. It is poised for greatness. Great leadership in athletics and on the university side, a loaded roster, a great group of young men. I'm very hopeful that they will retain our staff and keep that intact because I think that continuity is a huge part of the success here. And, uh, and it's time for those guys to roll. Thanks very much, Jeff. Appreciate it. Let's go next to Craig Haley. Go ahead, Craig. Thanks, Bill. Coach, thank you for, for your time and, and congratulations on all the continued success. Can, can you just, having been on FBS and FCS levels, can you just describe the difference and, and maybe what's, what's, what does the FCS level have that's even better than the FBS level? I'm glad you asked that question. You know, I think that the things that are better about the FBS level are pretty obvious. The resources, um, the, the staff, the, the army of people that get your job done. And um, that's really cool. The game day experience is phenomenal. Um, and I think as, as competitors, we always want to test ourselves against the best. And so that opportunity is very enticing. The thing that I think is where, where the FCS trumps some things, and I think I've said this before, you know, it's just, it's just more authentic. I mean, this isn't a transactional deal. It's about the players and not all of them. And most 99% of your guys know they're not playing in the NFL. There's going to be that. Maybe it's a little bit more, you know, I'm sure there's probably more than 1%, but there's a, there's a small group of kids that actually have the ability to go on and continue to play football. So I think they kind of soak up the college experience a little bit more at this level. And it's more, maybe a little bit more, you know, there's a little more business involved at the next level because there is some, there is a back end for a lot of those athletes. And so um, I really appreciate that about the FCS 11. I think it, it is a great brand and level of football, the combination of having this, you know, five, 10%, whatever it is of our student athletes that are good enough to play power five football and potentially good enough to go to the NFL. And this group of guys that just become a family and they love ball and uh, you know, they go fishing on the Gallatin, you know, during two days or, well, we don't have two days anymore, but back in the day, um, you know, I think those things are pretty unique to this level. Thank you, coach. Uh, let's go next to Colton Poole. Go ahead, Colton. Hey, Jeff, congrats. Um, you know, you talked a little bit about it already, but I'm wondering if you could expand on the process of, you know, talking to the players about this and what their kind of reaction was. Yeah, I'd say it was, it was somber. Um, and, you know, for the most part, that's between us, you know, that's between me and the boys. I think they understand um, maybe not the why. Uh, I think the hardest thing was the timing, you know, coming off the Boise thing and then this happens. I think that was the hardest thing for people to understand. And there's like, there's just no way that you control climb, timing of opportunities. That's impossible. And I, I think that they get what the opportunity is. I think the difficult thing for them was the kind of the timing um, and the why and uh, you know, I kind of told them that the why doesn't really matter, you know, um, but let's talk about this. And so, yeah, it was, you know, it was a good conversation. And you mentioned this too. Um, you, you, you believe that, you know, Montana state can win a championship. What do you, what else do you think they have to do in order to continue this trajectory? Yeah, I think one of the things they need to do is they need to maintain some continuity here. I think that's really important for the, for our players. I think we have an excellent staff here. And um, I think that, uh, you know, when Leon goes through the process of selecting the ed next head coach here, uh, I know based on some conversations that I've had that that's gonna be an important part of this. Um, that, you know, that's one of the pieces, okay? And then clearly it's about players. So, you know, there's gonna be some, some things they gotta do to enhance their roster here or there. And, uh, you know, and then there's some long-term things. There's the indoor, whatever that looks like for, for you know, somebody else's battle to fight. Um, and, uh, and then there's ongoing things that separate the level of play sometimes in the FCS, like full cost of attendance at some places so that you're playing on that level playing field. And those are all things that we're looking at. I mean, those are all things that our eyes have been opened. And, uh, and I think that the administration understands that that's something that we've got to continue to work to enhance. And lastly, for me, um, you know, Pete, 
Kiewikowski, just how important was he in this decision for you, kind of having that familiarity, that bond with him? Yeah, I'm going to stay away from that one. Appreciate the question. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Let's go next to uh, Paul Schwedelson. Go ahead, Paul. Thanks. Uh, hey, Jeff. Um, just wondering, you know, as you reflect back, um, you know, just kind of what are your favorite games or favorite memories that come to mind? Oh, our first Big Sky Conference win was pretty awesome. Watching Kevin Cassis, uh, you know, call an audible on a reverse pass and throw the backside post, just like we had drawn it up. Kidding. Um, but that was a big win for our program. And uh, I don't think that, I, I think that was maybe one that is not, is sometimes overlooked. Uh, you know, Davis wasn't a powerhouse that year, but that was an important win. And I think that gave our guys the confidence to go into Missoula the next week and pull out a win. So, I mean, the easy answer is, you know, pick any Cat Grizz game. But I, I think that was a really important win for us and a, and a good win for our program. I absolutely love the Incarnate Word game. I just thought that night atmosphere and how much our, our community came out and supported us, uh, you know, even uh, even during the dead of winter and, and, uh, and late in the season. Um, that was a pretty cool game as well. Thanks. Let's go next to Alex Eschelson. Go ahead, go ahead, Alex. Coach, congratulations. Um, you already kind of touched on it. You said, I'm excited to, to go back to kind of just purely coaching football again. Is there anything else that you're excited about moving to Austin and making this jump? Yeah, a lot of things. Um, again, I'm not going to touch base on where this may or may not be. That's not, that's not what I'm here to do. Um, but I think when you talk about uh, continuing to build relationships and I have relationships with some people at this new location, I think the opportunity to dig in and um, kind of, you know, kind of sharpen my saw a little bit, you know, it's been a while since I was a ball coach on the field every day and there's an energy that goes with that. That's kind of hard to describe and explain. And when you become the head coach, you're over here blowing the whistle and, you know, making sure that practice is on time. And when you get a coach, you're in the moment and you get a, you know, kind of live through those kids and see those guys grow and go from not being able to figure out what three up is in, in, in our base coverage to mastering that and being, and you see them like the light comes on. And, and that's a really fun part of coaching that um, I haven't had the opportunity to do a whole lot of here at Montana state. Thank you, coach. Congrats. Thank you. Sean Rainey, do you have another one? Yeah, real quick. Coach, do you think um, if there was no pandemic and we played last fall and everything that we'd be sitting here having this conversation? Just curious. It's a good question. It was frustrating. Um, but I don't have a crystal ball. You know, I don't know why or how, but some of these things fell where there was opportunities for me based on um, you know, my previous experience, previous experience. And I think what I've done here. And so, um, yeah, I don't know why it happened. Look in the rearview mirror and we can figure it out down the road, but yeah, that was, that was definitely, you know, an interesting thing to go through. Thank you. And we, uh, I think speak from, for most of the media, we, uh, respect the way that you've always treated us and, uh, the way that you've been, uh, honest and, and so best of luck in the future. And, uh, you know, thanks for, thanks for everything. Likewise, Sean. I mean, obviously those sentiments would be in return. Um, I, I, I've always appreciated the fact that you guys have a job to do. And uh, my job is to, is to promote, promote Bobcat football and, and present our program in the best light possible. And uh, I think good relationships help that to happen. And, and I felt like we've always had good relationships and I appreciate that as well. John Miller, do you have one more? No, you're good. Anyone else? Uh, anything? We're good. Coach, uh, in front of everyone, I want – oh, Greg, do you have one? Yeah, I'll, 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 take, I'll take one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jeff, good to see you again. Um, I'm just curious if, uh, you know, after the Boise situation kind of came and went for you, if you were resigned to the notion that you were going to uh, stay at Montana State as head coach um, before this latest opportunity presented itself. Absolutely. Yeah, that was that was absolutely the, the case. Um, and then in succession, multiple opportunities came my way. Um, 
and at that point you're going, you know, little bird on my shoulder trying to tell me something here. And it kind of makes you kind of examine some of the things that are, you know, and, and I, and I did, you know, it allowed me to be a little bit introspective and, and, you know, sometimes all of us need to do this and we need to look back and you need to look at what you've done. And I don't think we do that enough. You know, we're always trying to find that next thing and that next thing. And um, there's always challenges and there's always mountains to climb, but, you know, I, I actually kind of sat back and said, you know what, this is what we've done here over a five year period of time. And it's pretty doggone significant. And, uh, and then you start thinking about, well, what else is there out there? And I mean, the clear answer is, hey, an outright big sky title or a national championship or an indoor. But quite honestly, when you look at how many boxes we've checked off and maybe how many more there are left to check, I left it better than I found it. Thanks, coach. You bet. Anyone have anything else? Okay, I'll publicly uh, thank Jeff myself for everything for all these years. I'm not sure when I'll see you again, but uh, it's been a lot of fun, man, and I appreciate all your uh, help and support. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Go Cats. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.